Right. This is a presentation about how you remember the Laplacian in cylindrical, polar and spherical coordinates. Um, on the sur surface of things, this looks like a deeply daunting task, but uh, once you uh, can understand the structure of what's going on, it, it's actually pretty easy. Um, I've just set out here the Laplacian in spherical coordinates where theta is the uh, latitude angle and phi is the longitude. And it, this equation does look pretty forbidding, um, but we'll come to uh, see how it can easily be managed. I've done a very detailed paper, a background paper on orthogonal curvilinear systems and, and how you work out the Laplacian by all sorts of various methods. It's a very detailed paper. Uh, I have not left a st any uh, stone unturned, every step set out. Uh, so I would suggest you have a look at that if you if you really want to follow the nitty-gritty in um, all the gory detail. The general formula which is derived in the paper is set out here. And once you, once you understand the structure of this, this is really pretty simple. Now there are these factors, the H, H's here, which I'll, I'll deal with in a minute, but let's just focus on this structure here, uh, of these, these quantities in the brackets here. We've, we've got the partial derivatives, they go U1, U2, U3, so there's a sequence there. Inside here we've got a cyclic symmetry, and what this means is we start on the bottom with H1, we then go to the top and we cycle H2, H3. We start on the bottom here, H2, and then we cycle H3, H1 on the top, we start on the bottom here with H3 and then we cycle on the top 1, 2. So that's the structural formula that we're going to use. And order does matter because if we take the cylindrical case, here we have the uh, cylindrical coordinates R, theta, Z. Now if this thing here, ER, is the radial vector and E theta is the angular vector and EZ is the, um, the vertical vector. If you put a, a right-handed screw um, in, the, in the, the plane here, in coming up there and turn it to the right, like you would do a normal screw, it will advance in this direction. So it's a right-handed system. Similarly with spherical coordinates with r, theta, phi, where theta is the latitude and phi is the um, longitudinal angle. Our radial vector the r goes out like that. Our latitude vector is in that direction. And um, our longitudinal vector is in this direction. So similarly, if we put a screw going in here and turn it to the right, it will go r, theta, and then advance in the phi direction. So it's a right-handed system. Now, the differential volume is the key to understanding where the h's come from. And this is how the physicists remember it, uh, certainly how I remember it. Um, in the spherical case, the differential volume is just the differential radial increment, which will be just dr, times the differential uh, arc in the theta direction times the differential arc in the phi direction. It gives you a volume. So here we go. This is this is it. Here's the the radial increment will just be dr. I haven't drawn it, but it just go out like that. This curve, a linear arc here. It it is just simply um, r sine theta times d phi. And then you've got another another arc here, which is just r d theta. So here's the differential volume. It's dr times r d theta times r sine theta d phi. And so we can just simply read off h1, h2, h3, bearing in mind that ordering. That's why the ordering is important. It's 1, r, and r sine theta in that, in that order. We then plug them in. Uh, to the general formula, and we get that, and there's and that's the answer. And you can simply there are you know there are equivalent forms by mucking around with that, and 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 this here. But I'm just keeping it uh, straightforward. Now we do the same for cylindrical coordinates. 
Our differential volume is just our dr out here. We've got the, the height here, which is dz, and you've got this arc here, which is r d phi. Um, so we just read off the values of h1, h2, and h3, and they're 1, r, and 1, respectively. We plug them in, bang, 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 wooshka, we get this. Straightforward. Finally, come to the polar case. Uh, the volume here is a degenerate volume. It's, it's just an area, and the area is dr times r d theta, uh, which enables us to simply see that h1 is 1 and h2 is r. Um, we plug them into this formula. It's a degenerate formula because there's no third dimension, uh, so we just have this form here. Um, we plug the values in, and uh, that's what we get. So that's, that's how you remember it. Um, and uh, the critical thing to remember uh, clearly is the, uh, the general formula and uh, the idea that you've got to work out the differential volume. And, and even if you, for instance, exchange, um, some people use phi for theta and you know, interchange them. It doesn't matter. As long as you've got the consistent ordering, you will get the right answer. Um, anyway, I hope that is useful.